Now, chances are you've been in a team of software developers. And let's say here we have an example where we have three developers. Developer number one just encountered a really specific error. And let's say this developer using cursor to debug it, and then they finally figured out, and then they move on. So now what happens when a developer number two hits that exact same error a few days later? They will waste another hour solving the same problem all over again. And why? Because all that valuable knowledge is either completely lost or is documented in a static memory like a pull request description, code comments, markdown files, it will cost developer time to write it and also search for the documentations to find that solution. But what if that solution was instantly captured? What if it become part of a dynamic living memory that the entire team shares? This way, every time when developer encounter the same error, their AI coding agent is going to retrieve relevant information from their shared memories and be able to resolve this problem instantly because it has encountered before and has saved that inside of their shared memories. Well, that's exactly what ByteWorld is, which is a shared memory that connects all the AI coding tools together, creating a single shared brain for the entire team. So that's why in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how it works. And we're going to take a real project simulating these exact pain points. And I will show you how a shared memory can save your team from wasting hours solving problems that they have already captured. So with that being said, let's get into it. All right. So to get started, first thing first, we navigate to ByteRover.dev. And here's basically their landing page. You can see that ByteRover is a self-improved memory layer for AI coding agents. And here you can see it's compatible with pretty much most of the coding agents out there like Cursor, Claw Code, Windsurf, and so on. And here are basically the top features that we have for instant AI ID integrations. And it also does the autosave and the memory management while you interact with your AI coding agents. And most importantly, it has the feature for team-wide intelligence, which you can be able to integrate this with your team members so that your developer team have a shared memory for their AI coding development. So in that case, let's click on Get Started Today by clicking on this button right here. And here, I'm just going to sign in with my account. All right, so now you can see that we have signed in. And here you can see this is the organization overview. Here we can be able to create our organizations and memory workspace. So here, I'm just going to click on View Memory Workspace. And here you can see inside of this workspace, I have our memory and retrievals. So currently I haven't used anything. So let's try to integrate this inside of our code IDE. Now to use this workspace, we're just gonna click on quick start. And here we can select pretty much any coding agents here that's supported by the byte rover here. So let's say if I wanna use claw code, for example. And here, all we had to do is just choose a IDE that we can configure with. So here, let's say if I were to choose VS code, for example, I'm just gonna click on this open the code with VS Code. All right, so here you can see it asks us to install this extension. So I'm gonna install extension and open the URI. So now you can see that the Byte Rover extension has installed. All right, so right off the bat, here's a basically a Nest.js application that I created. And Byte Rover here basically creates some rules for the settings.json file for using the MCP server for the Byte Rover. And here, it also have the client rules for the Byte Rover rules. So basically, you can see if we were to open this, this is the instructions to always use Byte Rover to retrieve knowledge and also store the knowledge whenever we have a successful task completion. So then if we were to scroll down, there's also a claw.md file. So here you can see also add the instruction as well for uh, retrieving the information or retrieving the knowledge based on related context and also saving the knowledge after any successful task completion. So pretty much whenever we wanna use any AI coding tools, we can pretty much just provide this instruction. So it will basically use that MCB server to save and retrieve relevant information. All right, so now let's take a look at how we can be able to use it inside of our AI coding tool. So for example, if I were to use claw code, my first prompt, which is to review the critical recommendations in the uh, architecture analysis, the MD file, which is this one. And I want to see if there's any high priority task related to the graceful error handling in the UI. So first thing first, it's going to use the ByteRover MCP to read our knowledge base to see if there's any relevant context that we can fill in. And then it's going to read through the files that we have inside of a folder to understand the answer for this. All right, so now you can see that this is the answer that it gives me for error handling in UI. And now you can see that because this interaction has generated successfully. It also saved this knowledge inside of our ByteRover MCP. All right, so now if I were to hop over to ByteRover and click on memories, so here you can see these are all the memories that we have. So here you can see we have the timestamp, the memory on what is it about. So here you can see I have already created an initial memory just for testing, but here you can see this is the memory that's related to what we just talked about. So you can see that pretty much every interactions we interact with our AI coding tool, it basically saved that memory inside of this knowledge base so that when, whenever we try to do something, it will look through the memory first before it generates a response. All right, so 
that case, let's try to generate that reusable class or component for error boundary that can wrap our components and display a fallback UI if error occurs. All right, so let's let claw code to do this. And as always, first thing first, what I do is trying to retrieve information from the memory and then it starts to create a to-do list and start to implement the approach. So now you can see that it officially creates the error boundary implementation and also the error fallback as well, as well as updating the official documentation instead of our claw.md. Not only that, it also saves the memory inside of our byte rover store knowledge base. Awesome, so now if I were to say that this is gonna be our now standard pattern for preventing component crashes from breaking the entire page, and make sure to use this pattern for all components inside of our application. Now, if I were to save this, and this should be able to save this preference inside of our knowledge base, so that in the future, if we ever wanna create a component, it's gonna look through that rule inside of our memory and be able to implement this inside of our project. All right, so now you can see that I saved that memory inside of our knowledge base, and now let's try to open another clock code session and try to ask a question to see if it's able to retrieve that information. So in that case, here I'm just gonna ask, what's the standard way to protect a component like member list from crashing due to unexpected data errors? So if I were to run this, it should be able to retrieve that knowledge from our knowledge base and answer that question. And here you can see this is the answer based on the cloud.md file and the retrieve knowledge, your standard error protection pattern is error boundary. And basically this is the way how we use it, using error boundary as well as the fallback components. And you can see it also saved that memory inside of our byte rover as well. Because our memory knowledge are stored inside of our byte rover, so we can actually use a different AI coding tool like client here, for example, to be able to retrieve and save memories from our knowledge base. So for example, if I were to give the same question and ask that question to client, so here you can see it's going to retrieve that from byte rover for the knowledge retrieval. And here we're just gonna approve that request. And here you can see underneath it is using GPT-40 for the large language model here. And now here you can see we got a response, which is error boundary, and also gives you examples on how to use it. So we wrap it around a component for the error boundary, and also we can do it with a custom fallback, and it lists out the key features, and it is able to know that by using the byte over here to retrieve that knowledge. All right, just to recap everything, pretty much we can be able to use byte over here to be able to read data from our memory and write data for each interactions that we have with our AI coding agents. And I have also demonstrated to you that you can be able to use this shared memory across different coding agents. For example, let's say if you're using claw code for development development and then tomorrow let's say you choose to use WinServe or Gemini Code Assist or uh, OpenAI for example since you're using byte over for all the shared memories each AI coding sessions will have all the memories that you have interact with in the past using this byte over uh, MCB server now I also want to end this video by talking about the pricing really quick so currently I'm using the free tier and you can see the limitation is that we have 500 memory retrieval. And if I were to look at my usage, so far I have retrieved data eight times and the limit here, like we saw on the plan is 500. But what's really cool about this is that it has a unlimited memory creations for all the plans that we see here and also unlimited user usage. And the only difference here is just the memory retrieval for different plans. So with that being said, if you're interested, please go ahead and give this product a try. And lastly, I also want to mention that if you want to manage the memory by your organization or by yourself, you can also check out this open source repository, which is also created and used by Byte Over here. Simply Cypher here is basically the open source memory layer that is being used by Byte Over. And basically, if we want to manage our data by ourselves, we can literally use Cypher to connect it with our AI coding agents. We can be able to manage our data, our memory through our own cloud and our own platform management. Whereas the Byte Over here, it basically takes care of all of this for us so that we don't have to worry about the cloud storage and also the platform management. And if you're interested to learn more, you can also check out this documentation right here, which tells you more detail on how Cypher works. That's pretty much it for this video. If you do find value in this video, please make sure to like this video and consider subscribe for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.